नमस्कार एवरीबडी हेलो मैम हेलो एस्टीम गेस्ट प्रिंसिपल मैम कुलीग्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कमला नेहरू कॉलेज आई डॉक्टर नीना बंसल कन्वीनर डॉक्टर गोरवारा कमिटी इज ऑनर टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सेवेंटींथ डॉक्टर के के गोरवारा मेमोरियल एनुअल पब्लिक लेक्चर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी Before we begin I would like to take this opportunity to mention that Kamla Nehru College was established on July 20th 1964 It was then known as the Government College for Women with the relentless efforts of Dr Goruvara our founder principal this college reached new echelons of accomplishment in later years in the honor of our respected founder principal late dr k k gorwara we hold dr gorwara a memorial annual public lecture series each year we invite eminent persons from various fields who have made a difference to our society by their unique body of work our purpose is to provide a forum where dignitaries could share their knowledge with students sensitizing them towards the challenges of our present society and their role as conscious citizens besides being the founder principal of kamla nehru college dr k k gorowara had the unique distinction of being the pioneer in the newly emerging cluster of colleges which came up in the years 1964 and 66 having started from a ramshackle building in andrews ganj with no infrastructure to a non distinct non descript school building in defense colony it has been a hugely challenging journey every day and every year was a struggle but dr gorowara quite undeterred went ahead with her vision set new agendas and followed with 100% commitment till we acquired our own building it was a great achievement made possible by her dynamic personality amazing energy and tremendous zeal it was nothing short of a miracle to triumph over the fit- pitfalls and gain ascendancy in the panoply of delhi university colleges today we have a beautiful multi storied building a huge library an imposing auditorium seminar halls computer rooms sport complex and what not the college is taking forward the tremendous possibilities dr gorowara showcased and the traditions she established the college today wears a different look but its tone and tenor reflects a true blend of tradition and modernity dr gorowara's legacy and insignia shall remain shall always remain alive we remember as if by heart her poetry and one liners especially the ones she lived to say for the chief guests who grace the college uh, annual day year after year this and many more are the memories we evoke and cherish i take immense pleasure in announcing that every year on the occasion of the public lecture three meritorious students are given dr k k gorowara memorial awards they will be announced immediately after the lecture i now uh, invite our respected principal dr kalpana bhakuni to say a few words on this occasion dr bhagwani yes namaskar today uh, in the 17th edition of dr kk gorowara memorial lecture i take this privilege of welcoming our very special guest speaker of the day dr v s priya on behalf of kamla nehru college we in kamla nehru college believe in gender inclusive community ours is a vision that education should be 
uh, imparted to evolve a good human being, a good citizen. We do not believe in gender stereotyping because a gender stereotype is harmful when it limits women's or men's uh, capacity to develop their personal abilities, pursue their professional career and make their choices about lifestyle. As a society, we are very slowly waking up against the discrimination of a transgender in education, employment, healthcare, etc. There are just a few like Dr. Priya or Dr. Laishram or Dr. Trinetra from transgender community. And what makes them different from others is that they used education to liberate themselves. They are empowered today because of being well-educated. Today, such personalities dare to differ from stereotype of gender. But there are very few. Unfortunately, there is a sizable uh, transgender community reeling under various kinds of discrimination in society. Though uh, in 2019, there is the Transgender Persons Act, you know, which has given the right to self-perceived gender identity. Very recently in the last month, first week, Telangana government has taken first of its kind initiative of uh, setting up a transgender community desk, uh, which is for uh, inclusive community uh, policing. Uh, but these are very, very few examples. We must equip our education system to handle persons with uh, alternative sexual identities. On this occasion, once again, you know, uh, for, on behalf of Kamla Nehru College, I may say that we pledge ourselves, we commit ourselves to gender inclusive society, to break the molds of uh, gender stereotyping. We want our girls to empower themselves to have a liberated view of education in Kamla Nehru College. So I welcome once again, Dr. Priya to be with us today. I also extend a warm welcome to all participants, especially the family members of Dr. K.K. Gorovara. And um, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Nina Bansal, the coordinator of this program today, and her team, you know, the, the very uh, well-coordinated um, teamwork is behind this program. So with these words, I uh, welcome all of you to, to be part of today's lecture by Dr. Priya. Dr. Priya, welcome to Kamla Nehru College. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, here arrive the moments for which we all are eagerly waiting. I feel honored to introduce our guest for today, Dr. V.S. Priya. Dr. Priya, an Ayurvedic doctor by profession, hails from Thrissur district, Kerala. She promisingly works as a consultant Ayurvedic physician in Sitaram Ayurveda Speciality Hospital in Thrissur. After successfully securing her undergraduate degree in BAMS from Vedya Ratnam Ayurveda Medical College, Thrissur, University of Calicut, she started her internship in 2009. She went ahead for her post-graduation from KVG Ayurveda Medical College, Karnataka, under Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. This kick-started her professional career as an Ayurvedic medical practitioner in 2012, 2012. She has also worked as a guest lecturer in various government colleges in Kerala ever since. It is a great honor for me to announce that Dr. Priya is a trans woman by her gender, gender identity and is regarded as the first doctor from trans community in the state of Kerala and perhaps the whole nation, considering that she's a doctor since 2009. 
I take the liberty to quote her when she says, I'm really happy to find myself. Actually, I'm celebrating womanhood. I have successfully overcome the physical and mental disparity within myself. I can go on and on about her, but let us listen from Dr. V.S. Priya herself. The topic today is Declassifying My Life, The Journey from Jinu to Priya. So this is to inform everybody. The session shall be open for question and answers after the lecture. And uh, we shall be activating the chat box towards the end of the lecture. So please uh, drop your questions there. So ma'am, uh, I invite you to give the lecture over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nina. Uh, good morning. A warm uh, welcome for all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Priya Vyas uh, from Trishur, Kerala. Uh, as you have heard my, about my introduction, I'm an Ayurvedic doctor by profession. Uh, moreover, most importantly, I'm a trans woman. I'm a proud trans woman. Actually, I'm stressing the word proud because, you know, uh, cure something cure or trans is regarded as, you know, uh, a thing to be looked upon shame in our society. Uh, things are not yet changed, uh, but, you know, people are coming up, queer people are coming up uh, in all scenarios of uh, life. Like we have, you know, uh, trans journalists, we have entrepreneurs, we have doctors, uh, we have, we can see, we could see uh, trans people or queer people in almost all scenarios of life. So um, myself, you know, um, before declassifying myself from Jinu to Priyas, the topic is, I would like to uh, give some discourse on the topic gender sensitization or what, what does gender identity and what is sexual orientation? See, um, most of our people don't know Most of the laymen don't know what all these are about. They just know um, movies or media around uh, towards more of a comic or comedian aspect or like something to be bullied upon. So uh, it's, it's the history, you know, from uh, ages it's being done. This kind of discrimination is being done on uh, trans people and queer people in a broad term. So uh, it's like a child born as a cure or a trans, uh, first of all, he or she doesn't know uh, what is going on them. What is, what is their mindset? They're all, always confused, you know, uh, like they, are not, they know that they are not alike uh, kids around them. So uh, they're helpless. Uh, Nobody is around to help them. Nobody is around to guide them. So life of a transgender is pathetic uh, not only in our nation whether it be any nation developed or developing or whatever especially in our country which is a developing nation uh, things are a bit you know difficult uh, for us to survive in here survive in the society so what is transgender all about what is gender identity all about uh, see, uh, a person who identify uh, as, you know, man or woman, okay, I feel like I'm a woman, I feel like I'm a man, that kind of feeling is uh, gender identity in simple terms, you know, in simple words, in layman's language. Uh, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, if you're feeling that you're a man, you are, your gender is man or male. And if you are feeling that you are, you are gender, gender is, or you are a woman, your gender identity is definitely female. So that is gender identity. And what happens here is that people tag gender identity based on biological sex. That is the biggest mistake that we commit. You know, when a child is born, we just look upon their sex organ 
and we tag them to be ah this baby is a male kid male child and this is a female and that is not the case gender identity is different from biological sex biological sex uh, greatly uh, depend on our body you know and it is different from our psychological gender so we can classify this as cisgender and transgender okay those who have learned chemistry might know this terms like cis and trans cis compounds and trans compounds so cisgender means when this biological sex and our gender identity are same that is if a boy is born i mean biological the biological sex of a, a person is a male and a psychological gender is also male then that person can be termed as cisgender okay and transgender is straight opposite of this that is if the biological sex is uh, something different from psychological gender that kind of persons or people are called or termed as transgenders and it's a difficult uh, uh, concept to understand for cisgenders that what transgenders undergo Uh, uh, both physically as well as mentally okay so uh, people don't have a proper understanding of this 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 transgender term is purely a technical term uh, that need to be understood in this way okay and uh, sexual orientation is something different from this sexual orientation is something different from gender identity people usually confuse sexual orientation with gender identity okay Se- sexual orientation is like uh, to whom a person feel emotionally uh, or physically attached or attracted that is all about sexual orientation that is if a male if i am a biologically female if i am biologically female and my attraction is towards the same gender that is if i am attracted towards females then i can i could be called as a homosexual woman okay if my sexual attraction or my emotional attachment is towards the opposite gender i could be called as heterosexual woman okay and if i feel attracted towards both the genders i could be called as a bisexual woman okay so this is sexual orientation and the first thing is gender identity what we feel deep inside about us about our gender i am a male i am a female that that's the thing of thing about the classification about gender identity and sexual orientation okay these are the technical terms and now coming to the practicality coming to my life okay uh, born as an indian citizen uh, brought up in a middle class indian family class indian family well educated um, as a child i was confused like any other transgender kid i was confused about myself because i felt you know i am different from other kids around me other classmates uh, other friends i am different from all of them because they have you know a, tip- a typical kind of interest common interest but my interests and my likings were totally different from them and i was confused why am i like this uh, and nobody was there to guide me okay uh, to be frank um, my parents were ignorant about these things see it's it's a common thing it's a it's a fact that even educated people are unaware of all these things the importance of sex education to our kids is very important uh it plays a pivotal role in you know uh sensitizing the coming generations about all these things so that uh the running of our society and queer people uh, sexual minorities will be uh, somewhat okay okay so uh if i classify my life in three stages okay uh the first two stages that is my childhood and my um, school education phase these two phases the first phase my childhood i didn't know what i am the second phase the education phase when i was learning uh, or when i was doing my graduation post graduation and all i knew what i am but i was reluctant in admitting that 
because i wanted to live safely i was hiding under the safe zone of our society so uh, coming back to my childhood uh, i was like a confused kid and i didn't had good friends to share my feelings you know uh, and whatever i felt deep in my heart i used to write everything in my personal diary whatever uh, infatuations i had as a teenager whatever uh, i liked whatever i disliked see i um, the world around me was uh, acknowledging or uh, seeing perceiving myself as a boy boy child and i was i couldn't you know understand that because inside of mine was a pure woman a pure, pure girl and my interests were all girlish you know <laughs> i i used to play with barbie dolls i used to uh, you know uh, like indoor games i used to put on makeup i used to put wear ornaments i used to uh, wear you know uh, churidars or sarees or whatever so these were all like uh, at times i was getting confused at times my parents were getting confused what is going on with this kid they were already you know uh, but during my childhood they they didn't had that much uh worries but then one one day they you they uh read my personal diary in which i uh, wrote all the feelings i had towards the world you know and my parents were all like you know shocked they understood that this kid is suffering from a serious mental illness they they thought they thought that uh he's a, a mental patient or something so they took me to a psychiatrist and fortunately the psychiatrist was a sensible person and he uh, conversed with me and he told my parents that the kid is normal uh, you could if you want something uh, some medications or something i could give that but it's of no use I, this child is normal no issues with him so uh, fortunately my parents decided not to take any medications and i was saved you know because if a healthy person is taking some um, uh, unnecessary medicines it would it would affect uh, his or her uh, mental and physical well being definitely so i was saved for that instance uh, thanks for that psychiatrist and my parents and uh, you know after that after that i thought like why should i create all the mess for my parents uh, they should not be bullied in society like me i was being constantly bullied you know because i a trans kid cannot hide his or her mannerisms definitely he is he or she is very innocent they don't know acting so so that that was the case with me also i couldn't hide myself i couldn't hide my gender identity whoever comes to me i used to tell them like see uh, don't consider me as a boy i am not a boy i am a girl okay consider me as a girl and i used to make more of you know uh, female friends than male friends i was not comfortable sharing all the things with male friends uh, i was more le- lenient or uh, towards you know female friends and they understood me to an extent because i used to share something something personal of mine so uh, that was the case with my childhood and then i when i grew up started started uh, my adolescence when i was in teenage my high school uh, i thought like you know i i was fed up with all kind of bullying i i was even you know afraid of getting into crowd you know uh, if two people are standing and talking and i was uh, afraid of them also you know to to mingle with them i thought like they would uh, you know make fun of me after when when they come to know that i am feminine i am some different from them so i uh, even though i am not really an introvert i had to live the life of an introvert during my childhood uh, whoever guest come to a home i'll run off run to my room and i'll shut shut down my room and sit sit inside there i i didn't want to face them i had this kind of complex you know because i didn't know what i am suffering from what 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 is the case with me so i thought like i am different uh, maybe i am uh, i am an abrated person and i am an abnormal person i thought like that then i 
thought like you know i need to survive i need good friends i need to live a normal life so towards the end of my high school uh when i was preparing for my entrance exam for medical entrance i thought like you know after the entrance i definitely would like to join a professional college and when i joined the college i would be totally a different person i would hide my femininity or my uh, who i am and i will mask i'll put on a mask of a male and i'll definitely survive that was my decision after my you know school days when i was preparing for my medical entrance and i got one year for that for that preparation and i when when i was uh, admitted into my ayurveda college medical college i was totally a different person that there starts the second stage of my life you know uh, i was like uh, this one year the one year of entrance preparation i was preparing myself also i was uh, controlling my mannerisms i was uh, trying to enact as a man uh, uh, when i was conversing with another person i used to uh, you know control my the way my eyes move the way my hands move i want i had to you know struggle a bit harder to enact as a man in the beginning but i was successful when i joined the college uh, nobody identified me as a trans person or i or a different person and uh, i had good friends nobody bullied me nobody made fun of me uh, i could live you know uh, with a peace of mind i could concentrate in my studies uh, college life was a total you know happy time for me uh, even though i i wanted to i mean, i had to you know control everything i had to control my mannerisms the way i talk and everything but then uh, you know uh, that was uh, like for all these hardships i suffered i had a good result that is uh, i had a life that is very smooth that is that doesn't had any kind of frictions that doesn't had any kind of bullying that doesn't had any kind of isolations so i was happy for that and uh, i enjoyed the safe zone of life in the society i was unnoticed uh, in a crowd uh, you know uh, so everybody treated me as a male uh with no aberrations with no abnormalities the so called abnormalities you know and then uh i could complete my graduation um and soon after completing my graduation i decided to go for post graduation also uh so i joined uh kvg medical college ayurvedic medical college in sulia dk district karnataka and uh the next coming 3 years i did my post graduation over there in that college also i did the same thing and i i had least challenges to face regarding my gender identity so i could concentrate more on my studies i could complete my studies uh, after completing my studies i started uh, job hunting like any other uh, you know students in our nation and uh, it was not that difficult for me to find a job because i was uh, the so called normal uh, male uh, i was included in the so called normal binary like male female so i was a male at that time so i it was very easy for me to find a job uh, i uh, i tried various jobs like uh, i worked as a resident medical officer in uh, private hospitals heritage hospitals i worked as guest lecturer in um, government ayurveda college in kannur district and in government ayurveda college in uh, tripunitra that is in kuchin so uh, then i tried various jobs because i wanted to divert my concentration that is i wanted to divert my, the thoughts my thoughts on my own gender identity i just wanted to live normally you know the so called normally uh in the safe zone of society so uh, uh or any any kind of job i was going uh, you know trying i couldn't find a happiness in that because i was not myself 
i was acting in acting to be another person just to survive you know uh that's the greatest misfortune of any transgender in our country they have to either they have to mask them or they have to enact themselves to be another person and uh, live in this society pretending that they are normal or they are uh, going along with this binary called male or female or else if they are living as themselves they'll put themselves under risk their personal life their professional life everything around them whatever they possess they will have to risk everything for their gender identity so majority of them will opt for this safe zone and even i opted for this safe zone that is i was putting the mask of a male and i was you know living in the safe zone of society unnoticed i was concerned that uh, if if somebody if at all somebody know my real gender identity uh living for me or uh, chances of survival for me is very difficult and uh, my studies will go in vain all the all the 10 years i spent for my uh, learning process everything will be put to risk you know i can i can't uh, practice i won't be able to practice as a doctor uh, simply because if i reveal my gender identity the society will ditch me uh, so i was like you know i was living as a prisoner to be frank i was in the prison of society so um at a point you know uh, i started my professional career uh, after my uh, post graduation in 2012 uh, and then uh, I, uh, i tried various jobs i was not satisfied with anything whatever job whatever salary i was not satisfied i just wanted to you know explore more i i i just wanted to run away from me myself so i came to a point i i, I started my works in 2012 and i uh, moved on with various jobs until 2016 uh, 17 or something and then i realized my life is not going to a good place or oh, my life life is going in the wrong direction i am putting my life in risk if i if at all i am moving on and acting as a male like this uh i would end up in a suicide or something because my life was getting more and more frustrated you know i i can't uh, express that feeling i don't know how cisgender people would understand that that is you please just imagine that uh soon sooner in the next moment your body is transformed into the opposite sex and just imagine how could you survive okay because in your mind you are something different uh from your body and i believe our body is an instrument to you know experience this thing called this vibrant thing called life and if that basic necessary thing is missing for you how do you live you will feel that you are a you know a dead body or something you don't you that body is useless for you because inside of your that your inside world is something different very far far different from the your outside world and how world perceives about you is totally different when you look into the mirror you find a different person and you will uh, uh, think yourself who is this person i am not this person i am a completely different person so we'll be confused and we'll feel a kind of you know uh, wrath for ourselves and that is called gender dysphoria okay uh, we what, we feel our body is like a something to be uh, looked upon in wrath we can't find anything happy in our body in ourselves so there ends the second phase of my life and i started thinking upon this and there starts the final or the third phase of my life from jinu to priya jinu was my previous name and uh, after i decided see i decided i need a change i need a change from this 
whatever happens if 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 i have to discard my job if i have to discard discard my profession for that i am ready because i love myself more than anything else i came to that point fortunately uh so uh i thought of you know what could i do for this and uh, uh i thought like i need to do something even if i lose i lose my life uh i won't i don't care for that i just want to live as myself for a single day because i had uh lived a fake life all these days you know all this for almost all this 30 30 years and before i die i have to live as i want to live as myself even if it is for a second or or a day i'm happy with that so i came to that decision and i started my research works i researched upon that uh, for almost 2 3 years and um i knew all the hardships because i was uh, constantly looking the society what all things happening to the community trans community uh, everything i was vigilant and i was very cautious precautious i wanted to make my transition smooth uh, i didn't had anybody to guide me because i had least uh, contacts with the trans community transgender community the transgender community is uh, uh, taken in a wrong sense by most of the people so 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 many people relate transgender the term transgender to hijada hijada is not hijada or hijra hijra is not transgender okay transgender is a biological or technical term and hijra is a culture okay culture that is developed in our indian society uh it's because you know uh, hijras doesn't value uh, society they they don't care about society because society had already discarded them and they create their own community uh, to support each other actually it's a utilization culture actually but uh, we can't blame them because we made that culture and we are mocking upon them we are blaming upon them they are treating us bad they are doing something against the society it's all because of ourselves so it's all because of our attitude if we accept a kid who is a transgender uh then nobody will run away from home they will get the love and care uh, uh, they will get the prop education they want they will reach the heights they want to acquire and they will become, become better citizens you know they won't uh, enter the hijra culture so uh, hijra and transgender are different so uh, in my terms i was uh, you know more dedicated in my research works uh, i wanted to be confident i wanted to express everything to my parents first not to anybody else because i wanted them they cared for me i i i loved them more, most so i wanted them till my till the end of my life whoever i am whoever like whether i am a male or a female or a trans or whatever so i was patient i was patient enough uh, that i thought like you know i'll do my transition only after my parents approve of that so i researched i did my research to the point that i was confident enough to express everything inside of me to my mom and dad i wanted to educate them i wanted to make them know what their kid is undergoing what emotional turmoils what mental harassments what frustrations their kid is undergoing and i was successful in expressing they understood my feelings they understood my hardships and uh, fortunately uh, they accepted me as who i am uh irrespective of my gender because they loved me so uh and i was a doctor i was a practicing doctor my words were not childish i was matured enough to tell them see i am this i am this kind of person and i am not doing any harm to anybody i just want to live as myself that's it so they understood what i told them and they accepted me wholeheartedly and that was all i needed to move forward in my life 
and uh, the very next day i started my hormone replacement therapy and uh, the stage you know if a person want to change his or her gender the things are you know a bit complicated you can't change your gender or sex you can't change your gender for that instance but you can't change your sex in a single day it's a synchronization of many protocols you have to, if you are changing from male body to female body you have to undergo you know uh, uh, hormone replacement therapies laser hair removal electrolysis hair removal um the various surgeries that you require everything required time and patience you know uh, i was patient enough to undergo all these things i was determined enough see for surgeries it's not that easy uh we will be definitely see even i am afraid of surgeries we are letting ourselves we are letting our body to be cut and uh, teared apart uh, to make it something different but that different to make that difference you know that difference was all i needed and i just saw that difference i didn't see the hardships and that that's the you know uh, that's the base of my determination to do all these things and then since 2017 i started my uh, you know changes uh, it was a gradual procedure i did my hormone replacement therapy for one year uh and then after that along with that i did my laser treatments and by 2020 2020 last year i start my, started my surgical sessions i did almost 6 to 7 surgeries and even uh, dr nina might be knowing i was uh, under my surgical recovery for the past one month uh that is why she uh, lagged this session till now uh so uh it's a it's a long procedure it's a long hardship which leads to something uh, we like the most so right now i am dr priya vs uh, uh, see i don't hate dr jinu because dr jinu was a good person jinu was a kind hearted person uh, jinu was a, spo- a soft spoken person but jinu was not real jinu was fake Jinu was faking and masking uh, herself to be a man, and now Dr. Priya doesn't need that faking or masking, and Dr. Priya is real. So this is what transformation happens in a transgender person. Society understands them that uh, they changed from male to female, or female to male, or some whatever. If 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 it's a trans woman, society understands that. the person changed from a male to a female but it's not the real case the real the reality is that that person uh, you know acknowledged himself or herself to be the real person as herself that is uh, a woman uh, puts off her mask or to- tear apart her mask and live as herself that is the reality that that's what happened with me so now i am a genuine person uh, i am a, uh, you know now i am happy to live actually now i feel like i'm a human being okay uh, till this time i was like a breathing machine till till my transition i was like a breathing machine who occasionally had to take water for her thirst and food for her appetite so i was not living i was like just a breathing machine and now i like to call myself as a human being uh, i am exploring the world i am exploring life uh, it's you know uh, it's really a vibrant life and i am not complaining that i am a trans woman and trans woman is something very you know un- unfortunate i am not complaining because trans woman is also part of this vibrancy of life and i think i am lucky i am lucky enough to experience both spheres of life you know both phases of life uh, i could experience the life of a man i could experience the life of a woman and i could see both these lives apart from that uh, i could see life beyond because you know i understood what life is 
people all uh, see uh, if you have read bhagavad gita uh, you will see you will see more of or, or that instance upanishads also whatever indian uh, philosophy advaita uh, it speaks like more of uh, 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 you know thoughts that we can't imagine but i could leave that thoughts you know because i understood we are not this body okay we are something <laughs> different from our body because if our body doesn't match our thoughts our mind we'll start hating our body that's what happened with me i started hating my body i thought like this is not mine idam na mama in as a vedic chant you know idam na mama i felt like that so <laughs> i feel like uh, i led the life of a sanyasin because i thought of uh, renouncing everything i i thought of i thought my thoughts were like i didn't had anything as my own everything i owned from this uh, nature so i could change everything as per my thoughts as per my vision as per my mind so uh, i feel like uh, trans being a transgender is not something unfortunate it's definitely fortunate enough to experience the whole realm of life so uh, i am a happy woman now uh, and my word for the woman fox out there is that uh, enjoy womanhood see i have heard like uh, woman womanhood is something uh, uh, you know very down something down to what manliness is our society is definitely male dominated society and uh, we as women doesn't have the freedom uh, experienced by man or uh, male people male fox in the society it to an extent it's true but see uh, looking at my experience being a trans woman uh, i hadn't i i had no freedom to experience, express myself uh, but being a woman now uh, i feel i am free i am set free so i am experiencing freedom now and womanhood for me is freedom and beauty so uh, that's all i have to tell about myself and my life uh, now you can ask anything about uh, if you have any doubts or if you want to tell share something regarding what i talked now uh, i welcome everyone for that interactive session thanks thank you all uh, for uh, share uh, you know uh, sharing your valuable time for my talk thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr priya for uh, this enlightening talk and actually my throat is choked and um, i'm so inspired by your uh, lecture today and i see the chat box is full of appreciation and inspiration um, uh, there are so many questions uh, so many compliments in fact less questions but so many compliments so uh, i would be reading out some of the questions uh, for you to answer sure. one of the question comes from reet kaur ma'am you are a true inspiration ma'am can i know what are the bullies transgender face in their childhood uh the bullies that we face is that like you know uh, see children are ignorant basically they are ignorant so when we uh, move around with children maybe with our, our like minded people or our kids uh when they see something different from the uh, the uh, general things you know uh they feel like ah oh, this is something to be bullied upon <laughs> means if if a boy uh, uh who put on eyeliner <laughs> or if a boy who put on bindi uh comes in front of them they will definitely have the tendency oh he, uh, he's girly <laughs> he's girly uh, uh, i remember that i i used to hear the uh, name duplicate lady duplicate woman <laughs> that was a name called uh, uh, by my colleagues or my classmates 
during that time <laughs> i was like a bit you know worried about that why why they are calling me that name uh, i am not duplicate i am original <laughs> i am an original woman so uh, it was like you know um, chil- children doesn't know how to behave they are being taught how to behave so uh, the thing i have to tell is that you know you you won't blame or you won't make fun of a person uh, who doesn't have who is blind or who doesn't have um, legs or limbs any any limb ab- no aberrations you won't blame them or you won't make fun of them right because we tame we train our kids that they are not to be bullied or they are not need to be fun of they are have, they should be treated as ourselves they should be treated as equals so why don't we give such uh, advices for our coming generation that trans people are not to be bullied because they are also like us they are equals as ourselves so they should not be um, bullied or made fun of rather they should be made friends with because they are normal they are like us they are more they have more love in their hearts so uh, that's the thing hope i answered that question yeah yeah thank you so much for you know that sensitization that we all are getting from your talk so there's another question was there any support group that helped you in your acceptance and revelation of your identity purna sarkar our faculty member asks uh yeah no actually i didn't had any um support group as such because i told like you know uh, i didn't had any connection with the trans community around me because i was living a side silent life i was a professional so i didn't uh, as i told i was in the uh, safe zone of society and i didn't want to tear off that i i wanted to be uh, you know uh, in in that safe zone practicing my profession that's all so i didn't had any contacts with support groups or something like that i made my own support group after my researches you know that is i shared all these things with my family with the close closest of closest friends i had a few of them quite few of them few, few friends uh, that is my colleagues and my uh, batchmates uh, so uh, even in my workplace i uh, started conversing with my colleagues uh i made them understand what queer is what transgender is uh what sexual orientation is everything i made them understand first then i disclosed them as see i am not a male as you see i am a woman i am a trans woman so uh in the beginning they were shocked definitely they were shocked but then since i was uh pre planned i planned everything and i executed well so uh, my colleagues my close friends and my family formed the new support group for me uh, I, i was sure i was quite sure that they won't ditch me for anything so that was my greatest strength and support hope i answer answered that question <clears throat> thank you for the answer uh, dr priya there are so many compliments you know i am uh, not if i start reading all the compliments then the time will just go on but i would like to read this compliment ma'am ever uh, whatever this sick world says it's they but you are a real princess a real inspiration for everyone it's so great to have you and there are numerous other you know compliments also like that uh, like this one so so hani singh asks is asking good afternoon ma'am i think the male person who wants to become a woman has to face more challenges than a female who wants to become a man because in our teenage life boys bully boys bully and make fun of each other a lot could you please say something upon this uh see i think struggles are almost similar for both trans men and trans women uh but i think in our society even though bullying is more for trans women challenges are more for trans men because they are biologically born as female okay and as you know uh, ours is a male dominated society and being a female kid biological female kid 
they they would have to face more challenges than a biological male should face because they have already their own freedom biological males have their own freedom in this male dominated society so i think trans men face more challenges than trans women but trans women face more bullying than trans men that's the reality anyways the hardships and challenges are almost similar for both of them hope okay. i answered ma'am another yeah uh, dr priya another question ma'am i have a close one who is suffering from gender dysphoria <clears throat> and it just hurts me to see them suffer like that because in our family no one understands and ignores the suffering can you tell me how can i help them uh you can help him like you know uh uh see for each trans person their um, mental uh, status and their thoughts will be different because not not a single person is similar to another so uh you should understand what all things he is facing now it's not he it's she if if it's a trans woman uh you should understand what all challenges she is undergoing now whether her family is uh, could be sensitized that's the main most important thing you should learn about her family uh and if they are uh, see in the beginning nobody will admit this nobody will you know uh, understand this so tell him but in 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 the vision of my experience i could tell that tell her to empower herself with education to empower herself with a job to empower herself financially then move on with her transition i'm i'm i know uh, this phase is very hard you know this gender dysphoria is something really uh, you can't bear on so uh, tell her like you have to uh, face bitter things to get some sweeter things so so tell her uh, to make a limit to make a protocol for the coming years because i to as i told before this gender transitioning is a is not a fast process it takes years it should take years okay so tell her to be prepared for her gender transitioning and along with that try to empower herself with education as well as uh you know a job because that's what count in our society to survive so uh the best example being myself uh if you acquire something if you acquire something in life if you acquire something uh, uh you know financially you could support yourself and that is the biggest support you will get from anywhere else so tell her to empower herself with education and uh, financial stability and then move on with her transition right now don't make don't make any you know debating or uh, uh, something like that with family uh, keep going very smoothly in family try to love them try to give them more care uh, definitely if we give love we'll definitely reward that love we'll get that love from love back from our parents and our family so try to uh, tell her not be impulsive try not to be impulsive uh, execute everything in a pre planned way hope i answered yes so another question by a student akanksha tanwar uh, dear ma'am as you said that whatever media is showing about gender identity is different from the practical life but in today's life media is a good source for for awareness so ma'am can you please tell us some ways to create awareness in society about the true meaning of gender identity uh hello yeah, yeah. i hope you can yes uh, okay media is something that could be used uh both positively as well as negatively for a, for an instance i'll tell you uh, uh we had a malayalam movie if you are familiar with malayalam movies uh, that's regional movies in kerala uh we had a malayalam movie called uh, chand putte if, uh, if if somebody is film uh, uh, freaks are there they should know that uh, 
it was released in the year 2005 and it portrayed the character of an effeminate guy and uh, the movie was taken in a comedy way you know uh, it was like a, a rom com or something romantic comedy or something and it it portrayed the life of a queer person in somewhat an awkward way you know it was a to- it was like a total disaster even though it was a, a, a you know box office hit uh, the message it, con- it conveyed was a total disaster because it gave a wrong message to the society that these kind of queer people are to be bull- bullied upon or they are to be made fun of their mannerisms their the way they talk everything are, are to be made fun of and then uh, in 2018 the very recently they released a movie called nyan meri kutti in the same mollywood in the same malayalam film industry which portrayed the life of a trans woman the challenges faced by a trans woman for her survival and that was beautifully portrayed and it won many awards it won the heart of queer people also because uh that is what we require you know that is what we require how media should behave to us because if media is portraying us to be something to be bullied upon who else will save us even kids will start making fun of us so media uh, media definitely uh, influences young uh, generation as well as present society so it should be responsible media should be definitely responsible nowadays uh the media's around us even i could quote another example uh yesterday i had to i i i, I saw an uh, ad advertisement uh, about a local uh, jewelry shop it's called bhima you can see in um, youtube uh bhima ad uh it was a beautiful portrayal of a trans child you know parents accepting that kid they are uh, uh, you know celebrating that trans woman uh, they are giving her ornaments to wear and that is what that ad is all about about that jewelry shop you know so media and media should be definitely responsible in giving positive messages in the right direction so i hope i answered that question. yes 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 definitely dr priya so there's another question that uh... Uh, ma'am you are such an amazing example for us could you please tell us more about the difference between transgender and the hijra culture yeah actually um, see tra- as i told before transgender is a biological term it's, it's, a, it's a technical term it's to classify the gender okay transgender means uh, it's a broad term it doesn't uh, uh, you know signify that you uh, myself is Uh, i am a trans woman it means i am coming under this umbrella term of transgender okay in that umbrella term there there are there might be trans man also that is biologically born female uh, transition their sex to male they are called trans man so transgender is a broad term and hijra culture is that culture that was prevalent in our nation mostly in central and northern india even in some uh, metro cities of south india like uh, chennai bangalore and all uh, it's 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 a it's a spe- specific culture that is like it's a religion uh, a separate religion itself you know they have their own god uh, it's santoshi mata and uh, you know uh, they worship her they form a group you know people trans people are not trans kids are not accepted in uh, low lower middle class and middle class and even uh, low class families even for that instance upper class uh, also to an extent because society regards trans or uh, sexual minorities to be to be something uh, of low class, low grade you know so uh, families reject these kind of kids and they uh, the kids rejected by families will definitely be rejected by society as a whole so the ones who uh, whom uh, family as well as society ditch where they will go they have to uh, survive right in this cruel society so they form 
a group together such group of people form a group together and it's like a guru shishya parampara or something like that uh, it's a separate you know they have their own cult their own their own beliefs their own uh, traditions so it's a, it's actually a utilization culture but we can't blame them because uh, the shishyas will have to pay the guru uh, either by doing begging uh, sex work or something like that so it's a, it's like a utilization culture to an extent um uh, the people who we see in you know um trains uh, in badai uh, various things are there regarding hijra culture so hijra culture is totally different from transgender transgender is actually a broad biological term see we could uh, uh, we could relate that like you know uh, there are more women called devadasis right Uh, in in an older older tradition of our nation there there was a devadasi tradi- devadasi culture uh, uh, especially in south india i think uh, women who were dancers professionally who were trained in temples who were made uh, as a um, you know uh, icon for entertainment so we can't call all the women out there as devadasis right it's a separate culture so likewise trans woman is a biological term Tra- uh, hijada is a culture hope i hope i answered this question and made yes, you clear yes. about the differences definitely ma'am uh, another question from shivani ma'am you said as you said that inside you felt that you were a woman so do you feel satisfied with the supreme court's judgment of transgender getting the spot of a third gender or would you rather prefer uh, or would you have rather preferred the transgendered people to be included in either male or female category see uh, gender identity is something uh, you know unique uh, some people would like them themselves to be tagged as uh, man or woman in this two binary some people would like to call themselves as you know Uh, apart from these two binary they would like to call themselves as transgenders alone for that instance in case of me i would like to call myself as a woman rather than a transgender or a trans woman because transgender or trans woman is my biological identity or my uh, you know technical term for my birth but now i am a woman and i would like to call myself as a woman it's all personal it's all personal preferences if there would be a, a person uh, like me if if there were uh, if there is a person who wants to change his gender his or her gender they would like to call themselves as transgender alone not to the changed gender it's all personal preference so uh, uh, i don't think that we should stick on to only two binaries that is male and female we need to uh, open ourselves for the whole spectrum of gender that's what i have to say about this thing okay, okay. thank you ma'am uh, this is another question by asta mehra uh, can you please tell us something about the documentation also for changing the gender you had all your life in your all documents uh, to the gender actually are so I, the question is not very clear but i understand that she's asking yeah i understood i understood yeah yeah actually that is uh, see um Uh, about documentation we could change that at any any point of time you know whenever if if i am i am taking a decision that i am see i am changing my gender so uh, i could make the documents uh, clear in at any point you know first i have to publish in gazette the this name and gender change then i can take that documents to wherever departments concerned i can change my aadhar card i can change my voter id i can change any uh, documents uh, that should be that is required in future so uh, surgery is not mandatory that, uh, for a uh, document change uh, if you are a transgender you f- if you identify yourself as a transgender you can change your documents at any point okay okay uh, ma'am another type of a question uh, by drishti ma'am did you have any societal episodes pardon uh did you have any suicidal episodes suicidal okay no 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 
actually see i i uh, felt that some at some point that life is meaningless uh, i should not live a life like this is it required that i should end this but see uh, uh, being a, a studious person in my uh, school life and uh, even my college life i was interested in you know a, a variety of topics to learn and one of my uh, topic of interest was philosophy so uh, all the philosophical terms i learned all the philosophical points i learned uh, gave me more strength you know to overcome this suicidal tendencies because i was aware that this life is very precious uh, you are one among the billions uh, to get an opportunity to live so uh, it should not be uh put to an abrupt end you should achieve something you should uh, you know experience the vibrancy of life you should experience what you want to live as so, so i didn't uh, attempted any uh, you know i didn't had any suicidal attempts but i thought at a point life is meaningless uh, either i should put an end to this or i should move on with what i want and i opted the second option i moved on with what i wanted great great learning from you another question uh, did you face any discrimination and disparities after the transition in your at your workplace uh in the beginning a sort of uh, disparity was there because that that was all be, uh, because of uh, of lack of proper understanding so as i told before i educated uh, the people around me i started conversing with everyone i was not mum in uh, my uh, uh, inst- i mean hospital uh, even the cleaning staff i started conversing with the cleaning staff i don't i am not saying that cleaning is a not is a uh, uh, you know bad job i was telling like from cleaning staff till management staff i i uh, started conversing with everyone and i educated them about sexuality and gender identity and then only i re- revealed myself as a tri- as a queer person so they were all aware of at least something in the beginning they were shocked to know that i am a trans person because i was hiding all the time so uh, in the beginning definitely i had some uh, difficulties i had uh, some some I, i could hear some of them making fun of me but then i just neglected everything because i knew i would reach a point where i could overcome all those things because see transition is a procedure like you know uh, uh, there will be a point that you are a male and there will be a point that you are a female and in between these two phases there is a phase called transition phase and this transition phase is just definitely an awkward phase people uh, would have a tendency to make fun of you when they see them walking when they see them talking when so it's i had to undergo that phase also and fortunately my surgeries uh, coincided with the lockdown phase last year so i was saved from society i was saved from the bullying of society and my workplace and i reentered my workplace as dr priya vyas the female doctor so i i faced least bullying from my workplace great great ma'am so there's another type of question and i'm uh, again uh, reiterating my point that i'm missing all the compliments that i see uh, the chat box full of <clears throat> ma'am your journey is truly inspiring uh, i would want to ask you how challenging or easy it was to let go of the person you were so for so many years of your life before the transformation moreover in a patriarchal society like ours that is so unsafe for women where every girl is for once has wished to not to be a female you had the chance to live as a man did that never made you review your decision about transforming into a woman <laughs> uh that's a very good question actually you know uh, that's a point i forgot to mention in my discourse uh it's that you know uh the greatest challenge i faced during my transition was as mentioned in this question overcoming the male ego within me that i built up i started building up from my childhood you know uh even though my gender identity was woman 
I, as I told, I had to put the mask of a man and mask myself to be a uh, male person. So uh, I I built up a me strong male ego within my, me, and that male ego prevented me from transitioning the whole thirty thirty thirties of my years. So uh, to overcome that male ego, it was definitely difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, i had to you know uh, i didn't i don't know what all things what all uh, things i did to overcome that uh, challenge um, mostly i think you know the uh, frustrations the frustrations around my uh, gender identity helped me a lot in overcoming this male ego uh, but it was when i started overcoming the male ego it was easier for me it was easier for me to con- uh, you even uh, uh, speak up about uh, uh, my transitioning to my parents and to my friends so first the first thing first and most important thing i did was to overcome this male ego it was definitely challenging it was definitely challenging and the second question is that you know uh, after transitioning uh, uh, now as i told now i am Uh, celebrating womanhood okay in that celebration of womanhood uh, it's like i could experience the hardships a woman face uh, physically both physically as well as uh, in society also the thing is that uh, now i can't uh, go alone uh, at night for shopping or something like that uh, to remote places for in cities it's okay no issues in our place it's it's okay trishur is almost a city so uh, i could go for shopping in um, uh, even at 9 pm uh, and even for night shows i could go no issues but in remote places you can't go alone as a woman or a girl uh, it's the reality it's the reality of our society but i am not concerned about that because uh, see i am experiencing much more freedom now because i was hiding even in daylight previously i was hiding as a man <laughs> this hiding is not easy you know uh, uh, it's very difficult to live as another person hiding ourselves for such a long prolonged phase so i lost all my happinesses of my teenage my uh, young uh, you know young age i lost my happiness and now i'm happy i'm happy uh, uh, an adult now so uh, i don't feel i don't feel the negativity of womanhood rather i'll make that positive uh, in this freedom of womanhood uh thank you for your answer uh, uh another question from dia shilen our student how do you think educational institutions could make more structured changes to the way it works to be more inclusive um as for now you know uh, this our generation uh, the greatest thing we lack is a proper sex education sex education is considered something to be uh, you know uh, uh, something very difficult and something to be mocked upon because uh, we don't give that much importance for that uh if we start uh you know making our kids know see uh, this is a reality gender identity is a reality if you feel like you want to live as a woman or if you feel like you want to live as a man even though your biological sex is different there is possibility for this so uh we need to educate our kids uh, about the possibilities about the reality of gender identity uh if it is done in early stages definitely that kid uh would grow up as a better citizen who uh, who give more consideration for like minded queer people so uh importance of sex education is very 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 at more of at most important and i think uh in school level itself we ha- will have to start that and for the time being i think institutions and uh, workplaces should give at least one or two uh, sessions of gender sensitization classes uh for their uh, uh, workers or staff uh because we have to make a proper reach out there in all the realms 
so uh, i think uh, the sex education part should not be limited to school school levels it should uh, it should be wide enough in um, in other institutions workplaces also ma'am <clears throat> uh thank you for the answer uh, i think one of the last questions now you must be tired you've been speaking for so long now um uh, dr priya this is ritika kumar she says uh, we are really privileged to hear you live today i would really like to know how you kept yourself motivated when you were in the darkest of your phase at time uh when there was no one standing with you also your parents contributing in your journey from jinu to priya she wanted to ask okay uh see uh, as i told uh i was wandering from one job to another i was putting myself in various interests you know uh i was more of a gadget freak i was more of a travel freak like i was changing my interests quite frequently like uh, uh, at times I, i would be rather much uh, philosophical i would be a, a person who is watching me would feel that he is uh, an eccentric person or something so actually i was trying to survive i was trying to survive from this darkness and finally i had to uh, you know face that darkness and in that phase only i could take a hard decision i could take a solid decision like this so i don't blame that uh, dark phase of mine because that dark phase gave me courage or strength to overcome the male ego and to face the society as myself and the part played my played by my parents is definitely worth mentioning uh, if if at all they would have dished me for what i am Uh, i don't think my life would be a very well positive story because i i am more of a homesick person i am more of a person who is loving um, mom uh, i can't think of a life uh, without my mom's love so uh, it was my mom's love was my greatest courage you know uh, so i feel like every kid uh i uh, need this love from parents uh if they get get that love definitely they would be better better persons and better human beings so uh, it's very important being a parent parenting is very important uh give all the love and care the kid requires uh make them better citizens thank you ma'am uh, so this is the last question now from shivani datta uh after the appreciational words she says do you feel that achieving a consonance between biological body and psychological gender identity is more important or there is a possibility to embrace the plurality without undergoing bodily transitions yeah that is what i told before that is uh, there are, it's purely personal some people would rather uh, stay in their own biological sex and they would uh, enjoy that plurality of gender identity but i wanted to be myself i wanted to be a woman complete woman and i wanted to live as a woman i wanted to experience the life as myself in my physical terms so that is why i uh, uh, i under, underwent all these hardships and i Uh, became a woman biological woman but the case will be different for other individuals uh, there will be p- people who like to enjoy this plurality of gender identity and i am coming under this spectrum called female so uh, hope i answered that question yeah yeah uh, thank you so much dr yes. nina i would just like to have one minute from dr priya please uh, dr priya uh, it was such a um, wonderful feeling to hear you today you know and to have you with us today uh, let me tell you we have one uh, women development cell in kamla nehru college and where we are working on gender sensitization or also uh, if uh, i may request you to be associated with us in you know in a, like uh, an ambassador of uh, gender sensitization and if you don't mind uh, if we can approach you as, uh, you know uh, sometime 
uh, especially you know maybe for, for some event uh, for your guidance and for your um, you know we would say that we need to have someone like you to, uh, to be associated with us in wdc especially when we are working on gender sensitization and as i said that as an ambassador of gender sensitization would you like to be with us you know we won't take much of your time uh, I, we understand that you are a full time professional but even if you know uh, sometime we you may guide us and we can we may have some kind of um, you know direction from you uh, we would really appreciate that welcome any time welcome any time i am i'm welcome to all these things you know because i hope it's my re responsibility being a doctor and being a trans woman uh, to uh, you know sensitize and educate the uh, folks or poor fellows around me so i am welcome for that okay thank you thank you so much we are grateful to you thank you so much uh, principal ma'am for that uh, you know uh, asking that question and for your affirmation dr priya uh, so i would just uh, like to uh, now ask 10 more minutes of yours to stay with us when we announce the winners for the kk guruvara memorial awards uh, so uh, now um, yeah. it is a time to do the announcements uh, kk guruvara all rounder student award goes to Sanjula Gupta, Psychology Honors Third Year. Let us meet the winner uh, through a video. So, Joseph, can we have the video, please? For a while, award for all rounders. Give me my time at EMP. I have excelled at academics. I was even the university topper in my second year. Currently writing my undergraduate dissertation, I was awarded the all rounder award in my department. for my participation in extracurricular activities and academic i was also i think there's some problem with the video or uh, ma'am i'm just opening in a moment it's it's not being reflected here okay So, uh, shall we proceed further with the announcement? Uh, Ma'am, just a moment. Quick moment, please. Okay. Hello, I am Sanjula Gupta, a final year student of Psychology Honors at Kamla Nehru College. I was awarded the KK Gorawara Memorial Award for All Rounder Student. During my time at KNC, I have excelled at academics and was even the university topper in my second year. Currently writing my undergraduate dissertation, I was also awarded the All Rounder Award in my department for my participation in extracurricular activities and academics. I was also a part of the debating society and was the vice president and have won numerous accolades during my time at various debate tournaments. Apart from my active involvement in college activities, I have also extensively interned in the fields of community work, peer support, mental health and research. The growth oriented culture at KNC and the wonderful faculty contributed a space for me to avail these opportunities and to give my best and for that I'm really thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, the another prize, KK Gorawara Memorial Award for a deserving student from economically challenged category, goes to Megha Badhana, B.Sc. Honors Mathematics, second year. Uh, can we have the slide, please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, now another prize the third one uh, dr kk gorawara memorial award for creative writing in english manam the name of the girl is manam b honors english second year uh, please can we have the slide yeah thank you 
So congratulations to all the three winners of uh, Dr. K.K. Gorowara Memorial Awards. I also take this opportunity to announce the prizes that have been sponsored by many of our present and former faculty members and their families. Some of these prizes are given for academic excellence and others for exceptional performance in co-curricular activities. Let us have a look. Can we have the presentation, please?